Well, sisters, the topic of my talk today is preparation of a disaster. Now we know <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in Surah Baqarah, verse 55, be sure we shall test you with something of fear and hunger, some loss in goods or lives or the fruits of your toil, but give glad tidings to those who patiently persevere, who say, when afflicted with calamity, to Allah we belong, and to Him is our return. Now, disasters can happen any time, and you know there will be a final disaster, which is Qiyamah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who created this universe, will fold this universe back. And the word Qiyamah, the whole surah about Qiyamah is also called al haqqa and there are many other verses and many ahadiths about the Qiyamah. And when will the Qiyamah come? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept that as a secret. Even the prophets didn't know, even Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not told about it. But everybody on earth that is born has asked this question, when will Qiyamah come? And companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were the same. And they were human beings and they asked the Prophet, Prophet companion asked, O Prophet of Allah, when will the Qiyamah come? Prophet sallallahu remained silent. He asked again. Prophet remained silent. He asked a third time. The Prophet sallallahu said, what preparation have you made for it? So important thing is either the Qiyamah or the, any other disaster. Preparation is very important. Of course for Qiyamah, we have to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to follow the seerah, we have to do the good deeds, we have to serve the humanity, and we have to ask for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we hope and pray Allah will forgive all of us before we go into our graves, so that we can join Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Amiya and Salihin and Shuhada on the Hade Qasr or the font. Ameen. Now let's talk about Day-to-day -day disaster. <clears throat> Disasters can happen anytime and anywhere, usually unexpected, at home, at the workplace, in the neighborhood, in the malls, at schools and universities, on street and parks, in churches, temples, synagogues, and even masajids, and any other kind of place of worship. Now, natural disasters like hurricanes, tsunamis, earthquakes, blizzards, tornadoes, floods, etc., are sent on the earth as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan to either punish the human beings for their disobedience when they go astray, or He is reminding the mankind that dominions of heaven and earth belong to Allah alone. He is testing mankind with their patience and if they return to him in repentance. Now, even the natural disasters described above can be prevented by the masses if they make us suffer and ask for forgiveness or by giving sadaqah, being charitable at large. For example, the story of Yunus The nation of Yunus rejected Yunus and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Yunus the azab will come in three days. But there was some delay, the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yunus alayhi salam, a human being, a prophet but a human being, misjudged and walked away from the nation. But of course we know the story that he was swallowed by the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected him when he said, La ilaha illa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and brought back to the nation. And he was surprised to see the nation was intact and the azab didn't come. Now the nation knew that what Yunus' message was the truth, and the azab will come. But when they saw the azab coming, everyone in the nation, men, women, and children, all came out in masses and made a stafar till the azab disappears. So this is a beautiful example, that a massive azab and many disaster can prevent it by making a stafar, 
by, by individuals, by the communities, and everybody at large. But let's start with some problem on earth that we face today face to face and see how we can prevent some disasters. Let's talk about at home for instance. For example, fire is a potential hazard which can destroy one's property and even kill people. The family should therefore sit down and come up with a prevention plan. They should have smoke detectors, carbon monoxide detectors installed in proper places and batteries should be changed with every daylight saving time changes or more often if necessary. The fire exit should be clearly marked as you can see here and a fire extinguisher should be properly placed where, uh, somewhere in the home and everyone should know how to use the fire extinguisher. And all open fires, Professor Lassalle said, should be put out before you go to bed. So that's an emphasize, and this is beautiful, 1400 years ago he told us, before you go to bed, put out all the fires. So you put out all the fires that are burning, including the candles, unplug the heaters, and even uh, throw your cigarettes away and make sure you have put them off. And once a year, the family should do a fire drill at home to see how people can be evacuated when fire does happen. And it's a reality. You see on the television every day, day in out. And the loss of life, but people who have a plan, they newly escape and the lives are saved. Now fire in the neighborhoods. You should be vigilant about your neighbors. See if they are burning brush or, or papers or put off unsupervised fireworks, which can light, uh, you know, put your home on fire. But when you approach your, favor, your uh, neighbors, be gentle in talking to them. Don't yell at them. Don't argue with them. Talk to them nicely. Hello, this is a hazard. It can burn my house, it can burn your house. We have to live together. And the rights of neighbors, you know, have been emphasized in Islam tremendously. Number three, schools and places of worship. Normally follow the fire codes of the county they live in. They have committees, I'm sure they have a committee here, and plans for a disaster plan. But this plan is basically on the paper alone. There is no mass education, there is no discussion in the khutbah and tafasir that if this, this, this whole thing is crowded and if something happens, how they will be evacuated properly. Now, alhamdulillah, you've got fire exits here. But you see, you have to understand that you should have a group of people that in emergency are educated and trained to evacuate the people. Otherwise, sometimes what happens, the edges can be blocked and people can just die of stampede. So therefore, <clears throat> once in a now, every Islamic center and church and everything, they all have a drill, a fire drill. But usually it's the staff of the Islamic center or the churches or any, or any gathering place and they have a quiet drill. That makes no sense. You have to have a proper fire drill in every Islamic center, in every church, and every gathering place. And what's the best way to do it? You talk to the police and the fire department, arrange a very secret date. But you keep announcing in the masjid, someday we'll have a mock drill. And after you train your people how to evacuate, when you say, when the Imam makes the salam, you say, fire, fire, and everybody gets into action, and then people are evacuated. And if you do it once a year, then believe me, you will save a lot of life and follow the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqul yu qawli hadha, astaghfirullah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help his guide. Alhamdulillah, salatu salamu ala rasulullah. In recent years, at schools like Columbine High School, University of Virginia, Virginia Tech, churches, airports, factories, etc., there are incidents of surprise mass shootings that have occurred and hundreds of innocent men, women and children have been killed. This usually is caused by a lonely, depressed or angry person or somebody who has a radical ideology, who is mentally unstable. He might be a Muslim coming to the masjid and everybody might know him. But what is going on in his mind and his heart? He might be a lonely, depressed person 
we need to recognize that person. Otherwise, that person someday will come in the masjid and do something radical and shoot people and then kill himself. Happened has happened many times everywhere. Therefore, this thing should be emphasized in khutbahs and tafsirs. Now, natural disasters like hurricanes, tsunamis, massive earthquakes, for example, in Asia and Europe and other parts of the world require special plans. Of course, the Red Cross and Red Crescent and many other charitable organizations are established already. UNO works with affluent countries and uses their funds and their technology to help out these types of situations. However, the response is very slow. It may, for example, you have an earthquake in Japan or an earthquake in Pakistan or a flood in Indonesia. It takes from the countries two to three or four days to reach to the people, giving them food, water and tents. Now that's terrible. Why can't we have proper relief centers in every continent through UNO or through Muslim organizations? You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed Muslims with tremendous amount of money, tremendous amount of resources, oil, minerals and everything else. All we need is a vision. We Muslims can be leaders in saving the humanity, irrespective of their race, religion, color, or ethnicity. Why can't we Muslims have a plan that in every continent we can have, we can have a huge, massive relief center? which is independent of the political organizations and everything else. In this center, we should have own, our travel, own helicopters, our own planes of transportation and massive equipment. We should have supplies of tents and medicines and food and water. And we should have doctors and nurses and personnel. And we should train them that wherever uh, uh, a calamity happens, an earthquake or tsunami or whatever, you can reach there within 6 to 12 hours, not 6 to 12 days. Now isn't that a shame, the flood in Pakistan and there are three helicopters in Pakistan flying all over for hundreds of miles. What a shame, how, how did that happen? And now look at Japan, only today the United States ships went today after two weeks. Now this should not happen. All human beings are creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Muslims have a lead to lead the world in saving the humanity. So if our, if our people who have the resources, especially our people, brothers in the Middle East and other countries, have the intelligence and, and a vision to establish such a huge center in every continent, and how much will it cost to have this kind of center? A billion dollars? Maybe two billion dollars? What are one or two billion dollars for Muslims? Pennies. If every Muslim pays his 2.5 percent zakat, believe me, we can have these centers and many other projects. And that's a wonderful, silent way of dawah. You don't even talk about Islam. You just go there and help every human being you can. And then they will ask questions. Who are you? And then you can tell them we are Muslims. We are doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are not here to spread terrorism or Islam or fundamentalism or anything. Our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu When we say la ilaha illallah, that is hukukullah between you and Allah. When you say ashadu anna muhammad rasulullah, that is the hukukul ibad. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa has been sent as the rahmatul ilalameen. He didn't say rahmatul ilmuslimin. Rahmat al he is there for Muslims and non-Muslims. He is there for animals. He is for, there for all creatures, for galaxies. So we neglect the second part. We pray, we give weak zakat, we perform hajj, but we totally neglect the sunnah of the Prophet that is taking care of the humanity. Brothers and sisters, this is a sad situation. Right now there are two disasters. One is a man-made disaster is happening in the Middle East. What's happening in Libya, Yemen, Syria, where tyrants and dictators are killing their own Muslim brothers? Why can't we solve their problem with negotiations? Where were the scholars? Scholars are the best mediators between the tyrants and those who have been insulted. 
but has guessed that the scholars have been put in jail and made to shut up. Wow said, there is not a conflict in the world that can be resolved with negotiations and dialogue. But two, four weeks have passed and you see Muslims, men, women, women killed unfortunately. And how long will the dictator live? They have already lived um, their life with, with dictatorship for 30 years. May give them another 20 years. Eventually they have to die. Eventually they have to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And how will they be accountable for all the, the, the injustice they have done to their people? And imagine, while the earthquake was happening in Japan, which has now killed 10,000 people and 70,000 are still missing, and the nuclear reactors, you know, not working, and leaking radiation. Look at the paradox. Japan was the first country to have the nuclear reactors are going against its own people. You can't even, can't imagine the suffering they have, and they will take three hundred trillion dollars to go back on their feet. But Japanese will do that because their people determination. We have done that. We have seen that after Hiroshima. But while this was happening, problems started in in, in Libya. And why didn't the the, the, the government the government and the people of Libya see Allah is punishing them over there? The same Allah Subhanahu wa Taala can punish us right here. Instead, we are fighting with each other, killing each other. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. When will we open our eyes? What will op we open our eyes? So, brothers and sisters, what I want to tell you, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has said, "Wasaru ila mafrat me Rabbi ka jana jana ki alu sabawat walad wita til mutaqin Allah zina lu fi kura fi sarai wa darai wal kazi al ghais." And run towards the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Jannah, whose width uh, is much greater than on this earth and, and, the, and the sky and the heavens. And it is promised for those people who are mutakheen, who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who spend in charity, in adversity and when they are affluent and while causing me the loss, control their anger. Beautiful words, control their anger. Wafina and nas, and forgive people. So spending, controlling their anger, and forgiving other people. If the people of Middle East have followed these guidelines, we would have been in a different situation. Brothers and sisters, every one of you, we need to pray. We need to make a lot of astaghfar in masses just like the people of Jerusalem and ask Allah SWT to forgive us and ignore us and help to learn, to learn, learn with each other and help the humanity in life just to seek His pleasure.